Our series, Turning Point, uh, the idea here is that we all have these, these turning points in our lives, uh, the forks in the road, if you will. We kind of looked at that poem, Two Roads Diverge in a, in a Yellow Wood, right? And, and uh, towards the end of that, he said, and the, the way I took made all the difference, right? The way I took made all the difference. And we can look back and we can see uh, those places where we did good, right? And we can say, well, that was a good, and then we can look back at those places and say, oh, should have had a VH, should have done something different, right? And, and, and it's affected my life, right? These, these turning points, affect our lives. Uh, but we can not only look back, if, if we're honest, we're going to have turning points as we go forward, right? That, that's going to happen in our lives. And, and uh, we're looking at the example of Jesus in some specific turning points that we're going to face in our life. You know, you can talk about Jesus as, as the suffering servant, the one who suffered and died on the cross, as the king of kings who rules for us, or as our example, our guide, uh, our template for living, Right? Uh, and, and that's what we're really focusing on. Uh, certainly we'll talk about him in all three ways, but especially in this series, uh, Jesus is our example uh, for living. And today, uh, the, the theme is when all hell breaks loose, he, Jesus, heals. When all hell breaks loose, uh, Jesus heals. Do you remember the movie, The Poseidon Adventure? Right? Uh, well, you should. It was made like three or four times, right? Uh, I, I'm, um, I, I still have that stupid song in my head, right? There's got to be a morning... Yeah, now you'll sing it all day long. I, I guarantee it, yeah. But the, the, the Poseidon Adventure, you know, the way the, I think it's a rogue wave, isn't it? The, uh, something like that. Uh, a rogue wave comes and it completely turns the ship upside down, right? So now up is down and da down is up, right? Uh, and, and then it's the story, really, though, of a number of characters uh, and, um, and how they step up to the plate or not, isn't it? How they show their true qualities, right? Uh, the character, in a sense, that the characters show. And some of them are, are very heroic. They, they give their lives up for others. And some of them are villains, huh? They, 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 they can't seem to get out of uh, the idea of, of for, for me and, and, uh, and keep grabbing just for me, and, and they do horrible things to, to others and so forth. They, even though they, they may die, they can't find that heroic place in their lives, right? And so the movie is really about uh, how people react, how these characters react when, they're, when all hell breaks loose in their life, when their life is literally turned upside down, right? So th this is one of my questions for you. When has all hell, uh, I'm sorry, when has all hell broken loose in your life, and how have you handled it? I mean, all hell breaks loose in di different ways, right? Sometimes, uh, you know, we, we can talk about um, when unforeseen illness whacks us upside the head, Huh? Or, or maybe it's a, it's a thing that you have to, you have to handle for, you know, for, uh, until you die. It's just stuff you have to live with, huh? How, how do you handle that? Or, 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 or maybe it's, it's a financial hurricane, right? Oh, you lost your job, man. Oh, you didn't even give me a warning. How do you, how do, you do with that? Or, or, or relationships. You know how, how, they, how they blow up and how it just starts to be tough stuff, huh? And it's like, it's like, how did we get here? And everything's jumbled up and turned over. And, and, and it's like things that you never thought would change, change. And, or, or sometimes, um, sometimes it's just like living under the shadow of life, you know? Um, I thought about, when I thought about this, I thought about um, uh, uh, the, um, the, the, the singer when he talks about, uh, the, the, he's, in a, he's the bartender, right? and, and uh, uh, B B Billy Joel, right? And, and one of the lines there is, uh, man, I think this is killing me. Remember that? Man, I think this is killing me, right? And, and, and the guy, what's the guy saying? He's saying, man, I hate my life, man, and I can't get out from underneath this, and this is not. Sometimes, you see, all hell breaks loose because we're not where we want to be, and we don't know how to get out from underneath where we don't want to be. Does that happen to you guys sometimes? So here's the next question. Where is all hell breaking loose in your life right now? And how are you handling it? Today, Jesus is going to give us an example. How to deal with it um, when all hell breaks loose in our life. Uh, the last uh, text we read from the Gospels is uh, Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, right? Go ahead, Lisa. He would, uh, he would die the next night, right? And, and really, 
I, I, I don't know any other way to put it. All hell has broken loose in his life, right? I mean, he's gone to this garden and he's prayed to his heavenly father that if there's any way he would take the cross away from him, may it be so, but not my will, but yours be done. And the father said, yeah, you're going to the cross, man. Oh, and on the cross there, you're gonna cry out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, and his friends, please, please pray with me. Three times, right? They just went back to sleep. Whoa, huh? He's sweating drops of blood, right? And even at the end of the text, Jesus says to them, this is your time when darkness reigns. Did you catch that? When darkness reigns. So the mob comes, right, comes to get him. Uh, and the disciples are freaking, right? Uh, they, they see the mob and they said, uh, should we draw our swords now? I, I don't think they're saying to Jesus real calm, you know, should we take our swords out? No, I think they're doing it as they're saying it, right? Because boom, Peter's got his sword out and he's cutting the guy's ear off. That, that's kind of what we do, we, we lash out, isn't that right? I mean, when, when, when all hell breaks loose in our life, we tend to lash out at people. We tend to go to fight, huh? Would you agree? I remember uh, when, uh, when I was growing up, before we had the nice dog, the German Shepherd, we had this little dachshund. Uh, if you like dachshunds, I'm sorry. But we had this, this, this little dachshund, oh, a wiener dog, right? And, and this thing, could, he knew how to hit the gate, just bang, 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 and then, he, then it'd open up and he'd get out. So we were always running after this wiener dog. And I got home from school one night, uh, one afternoon, my mom said, uh, Caesar's out again, would you go get him? And I said, sure. So, so I, I'm just walking out the driveway, and this little wiener dog, Caesar, he's in the middle of the street, he's coming home, and a truck comes and boom, goes over him, right? The wheels didn't hit him. The oil pan rolled him. All right, so he was really, all hell was had broken loose in his life, right? Yeah. <laughs> And, and, and so, but he was alive, but he was biting the air. And you couldn't get close to him, honestly. You couldn't, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get him out of the middle of the street, you know, and it's, hoo, hoo, hoo. He, that's what we do, isn't it? Isn't that what we do? I remember I, I was a, a coach a couple years in high school, and, and this one uh, kid, uh, he had a gang background. He's a tough kid. His name was Godinus, but he had no meat on his body. Was like, he was like 120 pounds, right? And, and, and in this one game, he gets, uh, he gets drilled, right? And he, he's on the sidelines, and, and so he's kind of walking around like this. And so I get him out of the game. I get him out of the game, and, he's, and I said, Godinus, what's wrong? He says, I can't see, I can't see, but point me in the direction, I'll kill him, coach, I'll kill him, right? He wants to, be that's what we do when all hell breaks loose in our life, right? That's what Peter did, not Jesus. Jesus has stopped this, right? That's your cue. Jesus says, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and he healed, he brought healing into that place. Now think how he had to do that. He had to pick up a bloody, gory ear to heal this man. He brought healing to that place. I think that, uh, that those disciples in that crowd would never forget that. You think? See, that's... What happens when you bring healing into a place where all hell is broken loose? It, it just kind of changes things. I remember uh, when Jane and I, uh, first year we were married, you know, sometimes you um, take some time to figure each other out and so forth. And, and uh, for some reason I thought that, that she was mad at me. Um, of course, so the thing that I, I went to the go, go to place, right? Well, she's going to be mad at me. I'm going I'm to lash out. I'm going to be mad at her, right? And I, we never, I didn't say, well, let's go talk about this. No, I said, we're going to do that, right? Well, okay, you're going to be mad. She wasn't mad at me at all. I just didn't know it, right? And, and, and I'll never forget, it was, it, this went on a couple of days. And then I got home from work, and, and she said, Brad, can I talk to you? And I said, oh, okay, now here we go. Yeah. And we sit down at the ta table, and she takes my hands real gentle, and she says, Brad, I'm so worried about you. Is there something wrong? Whew. See, when you bring peace, it changes everything. When Jane died, um, 
I, I had to deal with different things, and I remember the cemetery, I, I went there, I had to talk with them and stuff, and I, I was supposed to bring this one piece of paper, and, and uh, they said, well, you're supposed to bring this piece of paper. I said, okay, I'll get it. Well, you, well we told you you're supposed to bring this piece of paper. I said, I'll, I'll get it, I'll, I'll go home right now. Well, you, we told you to bring this piece, I'll, I'll get it, I'll go home and get it. You know, and she, they, they were really on edge, right? And, and so I, I went home and got this paper, and, 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 I, and I, I sat down, and, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, I must have forgotten that I was supposed to bring this. And, and it so rattled her. Um, I'll never, she couldn't even put a sentence together. She looked up and she said, everybody's always mad at me here. They're always mad at me. And, and, uh, and, and they're always uh, uh, just, just yelling at me. And I, want, I didn't want to say who or anything. I just let it go. I mean, it was like, it, it was like she was so shocked that someone didn't want to fight. Even when all hell had broken loose in my life. I didn't want to fight, see? It changes things. Jesus brought healing. And he would empower you by his spirit to do the same. With your husband or wife, bring healing. Even when all hell is breaking loose. With your children, or with your parents, <laughs> bring healing. Even when all hell is breaking loose. With the folks you work with or, or the neighbors, bring healing. Even when all hell is breaking loose. In our world, when all hell is breaking loose, he empowers us to bring healing. And it changes everything. In this uh, text from Acts, uh, it talks about uh, Paul and Silas, they're, they're in the prison cell, right? And, and we've got a modern prison cell here. The modern prison cells, even though they're horrible, okay, I'm not trying to, to say they have it on easy street or anything, but it was a lot different back in Paul's day, right? I mean, it, it was like dungeons. And, and, and it, I don't know if you noticed that uh, when, when you read the, the text, but, but here these guys were telling people about Jesus and this mob came up uh, and, and, and they were shaking them around and they took rods and they, it says, you can check the text, you go home, they, they severely flogged them. Severely flogged them with rods. How do you think they were feeling? Kind of and then they threw them in jail and they put them in chains and they told the jailer, right? They, they, they told the jailer, you put them, you better not lose this dude or you're in trouble, these guys. So he put them in the darkest dungeon and they said they put them, their, 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 their arms in chains and their feet in the locks, right? They, they, how do you think they felt? Rather uncomfortable? And the text says that they prayed must have been praying out loud because it says everybody heard him, right? And they, song, they sang psalms. And it, and it says everybody heard him, right? And as they were praying and singing hymns, everybody was listening to him. Then all of a sudden, all of the chains fall off and the doors fly right open, right? The, the, the bars fly wide open for everybody. Go check it. Not just for Paul and Silas. For everybody, it says. Everybody, right? And the jailer takes a sword. He's going to kill himself because he doesn't want to get, he, he, he doesn't want what, what the people are going to do to him, right? If he lets all these prisoners go. And it's so amazing. Paul and Silas don't run away. We tend to do that when all hell breaks loose, don't we? You know what we do? Yeah. They don't run away. They say, no, no, we're all here. My goodness. Paul and Silas brought the healing of the reality of Jesus Christ in the lives of these prisoners, so much so that when the gates fly open and they can get the hell out of there, right? They don't move. They don't move. Because they're concerned about this jailer who's going to kill himself. When you bring the healing of the reality of Jesus into the lives of others, it changes things. 
They were so free in Jesus that they elected to stay in jail <laughs> so that this man wouldn't kill himself. None of them ran away. That's what we tend to do, isn't it? You know, as I read uh, this story and thought about it, I, there's, there's a couple movies. So one is Saving Private Ryan when they're on the uh, D-Day, the beach, Omaha Beach. And, and you see these guys uh, getting shot all over the beach and there's bullets flying everywhere and horrible things are happening. And, they're, and they, when they get hit, they, they yell one word. You, you, you know what it is, right? Medic! Medic! Would you like to be a medic back then? But the medics are running out there. They're not running away. Or, or in Band of Brothers, uh, 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 there, 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 there's a scene, it's, it's, it's in a battle situation, and, and guys are laying, they're dying all around, and there's this, there's this Ro Ro Roman Catholic chaplain, and he's kind of standing straight up, not, not even in a hurry, just going and doing last rites. He's bringing Jesus to these people, right? That's what God's Spirit enables us to do. Not to run away, but to bring the touch of Jesus, the reality of Jesus, into the lives of others. Wherever, wherever all hell is breaking loose in your life and in our world, there's, there's only one answer. There's only one thing that will help, and that's Jesus. Whether it's in your personal life and relationships and community and school and work or whether it's around the world. Paul and Silas were sitting there suffering, but they shared Jesus with their prayers and their songs. Changed everything. We can only do this if, um, if we understand this is what Jesus has done for us. Jesus went the way of the cross. He, he didn't have to do that. He could have walked away from it. Right? Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, at the same time, Jesus said to the disciples, don't, don't you know that I could pray to my Father? He sent me 10,000 angels. He didn't have to do it. But it says, for the joy set before him. You know what that joy was? That you might have life with God that you might have life the way it was meant to be in relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He didn't run away, and he didn't lash out. Uh, just uh, Sometimes we, we don't understand or we don't think about Jesus being absolutely human. And, and he's absolutely human. He's hanging on the cross. He's got the nails in his, in his wrist and the nerve endings are, 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 are there. They're just, they're, they're just shooting through him, right? His back is laid open from the whipping. He's on the boards, right? And, and the splinters are going through him and, and, and he can hardly breathe and they're making fun of him. What would you do if you had the power? Would you lash out? Jesus didn't lash out because he loved you. He didn't run away because he loved you. He wanted to bring you healing and peace. That's why it says this in Isaiah. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. Read the rest of it with me, please. And by his wounds we are healed. Whatever storm you're in, wherever your life is turned upside down, where, wherever all hell is broken loose, I, I want you to know you're not alone. Jesus is with you. He doesn't run away. I, I mean, if there's one place in all of the history of humankind where all hell had broken loose, it's here on the cross. Right there. And he didn't run away. And he didn't lash out for you, wherever things are crazy and upside down and not right, Jesus is there with you. He's there to bring you healing and, and to give you peace. 
When Jesus rose from the dead, right, he had this greeting, and he said it every single time he appeared to people. And the greeting, read it with me, one, two, three, he says, peace be with you. And this is shalom, peace of body and soul and mind and spirit. This is the peace he gives you. Right now, his spirit is touching your heart with his truth that, that he makes you right with God, that he makes things the way it was meant to be, what we were created for, to have this, this relationship, this tie-in with God, to live our lives in that peace. And as you receive that moment by moment by faith, as, as you trust that, as, as you know this Jesus is there with you, he, he empowers you to take him into the lives of others. Especially in those places where all hell is breaking loose, to, to, to bring his healing, not, not to lash out or to run away, but always to bring his peace. And it changes things. So this week, where is all hell breaking loose in your life? Where are you tempted to react like Peter, huh? Lashing out, stop it. That's what Jesus said, stop it. What are you doing? <laughs> okay. Turn away from this. By the power of the Holy Spirit, following the example of Jesus. No, don't, don't run away, don't lash out. But right in that place where all hell is breaking loose in your life, bring the healing of the Savior. See what God will do. God has placed you there for a reason for a mission, as the Father has sent me, I am sending you. For this is the power of the cross and the empty tomb in your life. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in true faith to life never ending. Amen.